Hello and good evening once again there, brethren. Um, I had to move out to the uh, dining room here because my wife has gone to bed. So, once again, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We will be reading verses 8 on to verse 10. <clears throat> John chapter 14, verses 8 on to verse 10. And I've kind of touched on this in the previous video, but you're going to see how these tie together. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father. And it, sufficeth, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Shewest the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father dwelleth in me, he doeth the works, the soul of the Godhead. Okay? The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the body. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. One God. <clears throat> Alright? Turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3 verses now we're, we're going to be in John chapter 3 but we're going to we're going to look at it in different parts okay John chapter 3 verses 25 on to verse 27 <clears throat> John chapter 3 verses 25 on to verse 27 then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, <clears throat> he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Now look at this. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Again, again, we are going over this again. Luke chapter 19. Verses 35 on to verse 43. Luke chapter 19, verses 35 on to verse 33. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt. And they set thereon, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. <clears throat> and some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Covered stones in the previous video. <laughs> and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid, from thine eyes. 
from thy from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. But now these things are hid from thine eyes. <clears throat> Go back to John. John chapter 3, verses 31 on to verse 36. Okay? He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. <clears throat> and no man receiveth his testimony. He hath received his testimony. He that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. <clears throat> For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Notice that. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. <laughs> spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the body. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Get it? Let's continue. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hands. Into his hand, excuse me. <clears throat> he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him, abideth on him. Okay? John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Verses 24 on to verse 20, uh, 41. Now, from the previous video, we're reading a lot of the same verses. But see, they're tying in together, see. Hold on. John chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 41. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For ye believe not that I am he. Ye shall die, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say to you, to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true. And I speak the word and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him, which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He. I am He. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? And that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. <clears throat> and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not, hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If... Ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, how sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. 
I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do your, ye do the deeds of your father. Okay? Now, Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3. Very quickly, one verse. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. And then, in the previous video, we read in Romans 11, that blindness in part has happened unto Israel. Now go back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21. John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21. <clears throat> 18 on to verse 21 in John chapter 3. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. <clears throat> because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the commandment, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth come to the light, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Look at that. And verse 19, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Brethren, there are some people out there whom God has closed their eyes unto the truth. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You reject the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You reject that Jesus Christ died for you who are no good who cannot save yourself you reject that God's wrath is upon you you come to him in your pride thinking that you were worth dying for not broken being broken of yourself is a requirement oh Because what, what do you do when you come to the Lord in your pride? Hmm? You love him for only what he gives you. Not for who he is. Who would have mercy on you, a sinner who is chief. Hi. That's why brokenness. That's why brokenness is imperative to salvation. You can't be fixed unless you're broken. And someone who has self-righteousness in them. They see only what they see in front of them. That's it. Because the Lord hath blinded their eyes. But those who come to the Lord broken. Broken and contrite. And believe on him. And call upon him. 
the Lord will give him eyes to see. Second Kings chapter six. Second Kings chapter six. Second <clears throat> Kings chapter six, verses thirteen on to verse eighteen. Second Kings chapter six, verses thirteen on to verse eighteen. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night, and encompassed and the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, this is Gehazi talking about Elisha, and gone forth, behold, the host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? <clears throat> and he, being Elisha, answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of of Elisha. So, <clears throat> in this passage right here in Scripture, you see two things. God opens people's eyes, and God can also smite people with blindness, both literally and spiritually. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the capital S, Spirit of the Living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust we have, and such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of our, as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Our sufficiency is of God. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. He's making re reference to the, the letter, okay? The letter, the law, the law of Moses. That's what he's referring to. He's not referring to the scriptures. He's referring to the, the law of Moses. Okay, people will come to this and say, uh, use that as an excuse not to read the scriptures. Okay, he's talking about the letter of the law. Okay, let's continue. But if the ministration of death written and graven in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. Hold on. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? 
For if the for if the ministration of condemnation be glory, talking about the law, okay, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory, okay, the grace of God. Neighbors across the way, beg your pardon. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, talking about the law, okay, the Old Testament law, okay, much more that which, is, which remaineth is glorious today, this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay. Seeing then we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away, in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. People thinking that they are still under the law or trying to apply things from that dispensation to make them applicable to this dispensation. Okay? And the veil is lifted away. What does it say? Which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. You'll be able to see. Because the Lord will give you sight. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory, the glory of man, to glory, the glory of God, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And now, Psalm 146. Psalm 146. You know, I, I so many people that I talk with are always like, I can't believe these people. I can't believe these people. Yeah, yeah, it's mind-boggling. I, I totally agree with a lot of the brethren and sisters who, uh, who I speak with um, say that kind of stuff. It's I can't believe these people nowadays. I can't believe these people in the church buildings. I, 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 I can't believe it. It's like, yeah, I know it's crazy. But there again, brethren, remember... It is written, and we have been forewarned and foretold of these things that are coming to pass right now. It's not a shock onto us, but we are still taken aback by it, aren't we not? These people and those who um, reject Christ, God has pretty much given them what they want. Woe be upon you. Woe be upon you. If the Lord grants you what you want apart from Christ Jesus, God our Father himself. Whoa. Whoa. Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God. 
while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord loseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. Open the eyes of the blind. Okay? A natural man, someone who is not regenerate, someone who is not saved, cannot receive the deeper things of scripture because this is a spiritual book and you compare spiritual things with spiritual if you are of the church of the living god and the holy ghost and the lord is that spirit that dwells within you he will guide you into all truth the lord openeth the eyes of the blind you're lost you're blind you're blind you might think you know a few things here and there, a little something, something. But when it comes to truth, you're blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down, pentient, submissive. The Lord loveth, loveth the righteous. And Christ's righteousness is imputed unto us today, is it not? For those of us who are saved, born again of the church of the living God. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Go to Luke chapter 14. <clears throat> Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verses 7 on to verse 11. Okay? Hold on one second, brethren. See, brethren, in the previous video, we looked at the aspect of stones, okay? The Lord said, if these shall hold their peace, even the stones will cry out, okay? And the Jew is the apple of God's eye, God's chosen people still. But we, the Gentile, have been grafted in to make them jealous, okay? We saw that in the previous video. But also, a lot of the Jewish people, <clears throat> like, uh, are still within the Old Testament, okay? They still adhere to the Old Testament. They reject the New Testament. And which we have just seen, that veil is taken away in Christ, okay? God opens the eyes of the blind, all right? And blindness in part has happened unto Israel, okay? Luke chapter 14, verses 7, on to verse 11. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. Um, don't boast against the root. Don't boast against the root, the Jews, for the root beareth thee, not the other way around, okay? Salvation is of the Jews, okay? And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, give this man place, 
that thou being and thou being ashamed to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. In the previous video, we be Abraham's seed. And for today, the easy believism heretics. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. You easy believism heretics, you're full of pride. No brokenness. You have pride in your belief. Don't you? Yes, you do. That's why, because, because of your pride in your belief, that is how you justify living in sin and believing yourself that you are of Christ, when in fact you are not. And look at the contrast. And he that humbleth himself is exalted. <clears throat> why, do you, why do you think, brethren, these easy believism heretics, why do you think they're so shallow? As Brother Matthew Landau said, they go from side to side. They can't go down deep or up high. They just go side to side. They're blind. They are blind to the truth of the scriptures. They are. Oh, they know that those of us of the Church of the Living God, they see that we are of the truth, and the truth is in Jesus, okay? They see that. But of themselves, they're blind unto the truths of Scripture. <clears throat> and see, this thing about pride again, Let's look at, go to Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy. Okay? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 and 8. Come on, there we go. <clears throat> now, Dispensational, dispensationally, obviously, this is for the Jews, okay? This is the law, okay? This is the letter, all right? But note this very stern warning. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 and 7. Oh, 6 on to 8. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay? We are chosen in Christ when we come to him broken and believe on him and call on him to save us. Okay? The chosen is Jesus Christ. Christ. We are part of his bones and part of his flesh. Okay? When you are saved and born again today, you, yes you, Church of the Living God, you are part of Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? You are part of him. All right? And are we not the Church of the Living God, truly saved and born again? Are we not very small especially right now with all the um, heretics and all the infiltrators and all the fakes being shaved away. Huh? 
Yes. The, um, what is this? The chosen is Jesus Christ. Okay? The chosen is Jesus Christ. You are elect in Jesus Christ. When you are saved, you are of the elect in Jesus Christ. Not that Calvinism heresy garbage. No, no. Calvin, shh, blow that out of the water, man. No, no. The chosen is Jesus Christ. But let's continue. Okay. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people, the least of all saints. God's a God of the little guy, just so you know. But because the Lord loved you, past tense, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, loved you. Loved you, okay? See, we were grafted in to make the Jew jealous. So we have part of that inheritance, all right? But also for our instruction in righteousness, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, remember, for our instruction in righteousness, Pharaoh, form of Satan, king of Egypt, Egypt, form of the world, okay? And now, Deuteronomy 8, verses 11 under verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 under verse 20. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwell therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up. You know, it is very possible Church of the Living God, that the Lord can give you very many blessings to see for your own self so you can see where is your heart at? You know, when you're riding high on the hog, it's very easy to get full of yourself. Oh, I've run into that with so many who, who call themselves Christians who are very quick to boast of themselves what God has done for them. Not the other way around. Not boasting of the Lord for how he had mercy on a sinner who is chief. I've run into that all the time out there, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's very easy that our hearts could be lifted up. And what happens when you're in pride? And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You forget. You forget. You know, when you forget something, sometimes you don't just see it, but forget it. See what I'm saying? Let's continue. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, my power 
and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. <laughs> but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. And the nations which the Lord destroyeth before you, as the nations, excuse me, which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Pride can cause blindness. Sometimes those of the Church of the Living God can let their pride get the best of them and they be blinded onto the truth that's right in front of their face. But see, pride, pride can lead to blindness. And those of you of the Church of the Living God who struggle with your pride, hi, you know that. You know that. And all you fakes, you relish in that. You relish in it. And Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 3 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 3 and 6. Understand therefore this day, that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out, and destroy them quickly, as the Lord hath said unto thee. Speak not thou in thine heart, after that the Lord thy God hath cast thee, hath cast them out from before thee, excuse me, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in, brought me in to possess this land. Because you were worth dying for. Right? Because of your righteousness, right? Ah, uh, let's continue. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Not for thy righteousness. And what is your righteousness? Easy believes, easy believes, uh, believes, ah, vain believing heretic. There, there you go. <laughs> I'll offend you either way. <laughs> okay. What is your righteousness? Your belief. Not the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not your righteousness. Your belief is your righteousness. Your work of belief. Not for thy righteousness, or for the uprightness of thine heart, dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Come on, fingers, work with me. Sorry about that, brethren. Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, King Uzziah was a godly king. He had some issues. You can read about that on your own time. But he was a godly king. The death of a godly king. Okay? When the godly are taken out of the way. All right? Who today is standing up? I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, 
high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Note the Lord there. The Lord sitting upon a throne, a singular throne, one God. High and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the ser seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Okay? And you'll notice there, okay, notice in this verse, the Lord is in all capitals, okay? And when you look in verse 1, it says, the Lord, capital L, and lowercase o-r-d, okay? And it says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Spirit, soul, and body, okay? The three components of the Godhead that separate one from another. And yes, they communicate with one another. Not one person, two person, three persons that make one God. No, that's heresy. That's lunacy, okay? Let's continue. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The King, the Lord of hosts. Look at the humility there. The brokenness there. This is Old Testament, written on to the Jews in a different dispensation. A whole lot of instruction in righteousness here. Okay? Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged from off the, the from off the altar. Okay? From off the altar. In a way you can liken the cross as an altar. On a, in a way you can liken it onto an altar. Because the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was sacrificed on the cross, bled on the cross to pay for our sins, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? And, and notice to a live coal. A live coal. Probably in the shape of a stone? Hmm. Let's continue. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord. Note the lowercase spelling there. Okay? One God. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? <laughs> Saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. If these hold their peace... Even the stones will cry out. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Hi, all you easy believism heretics, you Jesuit coadjutors. Hi. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert 
and be healed. Oh, oh, oh. don't worry. We're going to be getting to the New Testament tie-in in Corinthians. Wait for it. Wait for it, okay? I know that's what you're thinking, ain't you? Yeah, wait for it. Then said I, then I, then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate, and the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth. And it shall return, and shall be eaten, as a teal tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Okay? Now, very quickly, Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, verses 18 on to verse 25. Isaiah 44, verses 18, on to verse 25. They have not known or nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart pride. Pride. Neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? Where are we reading to? 25. Okay, sorry. He feedeth on ashes a deceived heart hath turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? <clears throat> Pride. Pride. There is ignorance, not knowing better. Yes, there is. But the main source of blindness, brethren, it's pride. Pride. You know that. You know that. You don't want to deal with the fact that you're not good and that you can't save yourself? That you're scum that deserves to go to hell? I. Huh? So what? All you do is just believe without any brokenness? Pride. Pride. And then look at y'all. So full of yourselves. <laughs> Your pride reeks of putrefaction. Reeks of it. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant, I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. The Lord Jesus Christ has died, buried, and rose again third day according to the scriptures. And he shed the bl his blood, the blood of God, on that cross to pay for your sins. It's there. You have to come to him on his terms, broken and contrite. Because you, you know what? You know what? Let me, let me tell you something that's pretty obvious. Let me play Captain Obvious. God hates pride. God hates pride. How are, how are we, hi, how are we doing with that, huh? 
Sing, O heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified, and glorified himself in Israel. Salvation is of the Jews. Jesus Christ is a Jew. He's Jewish. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, Lord Jesus Christ, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad that turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish. And we, and we got to read uh, verse 26. We got to read verse 26. That confirmeth the, the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers that saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah, you shall be built and I will raise up the decayed places thereof future prophecy yet to be fulfilled. Look at verse 18. They have not known nor understood, for he has shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And right here, and none considereth in his heart, Neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by, by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground and will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. And in context, he's talking about Satan, the anointed cherub. Satan's sin was pride. And what does it say? Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by the reason of thy brightness. Captiva captivated by his own beauty. His own brightness, you could say. Blinded him. And now to what most of you, the Church of the Living God, was waiting for. The reference that, uh, that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Or excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 7. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. All you easy believism heretics do. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Right there. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Hmm. Hmm. 
know about the seed, the parable of the sower and the seeds. Okay? Remember that? God has given these people over to blindness because they are of pride. They are of their father, the devil, full of pride. And these people who say, just believe, just believe, and twist and change what repentance is, there's no brokenness in them. There's none. There's none. And when they do get brokenness, they go back into their little hovel and hide under guises of different channels to only reappear when his provincial gives him the go-ahead to, which is coming, okay? They go back and suck their thumb instead of going down to their knees in repentance, brokenness of themselves, and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ for what he did for them and calling on his name. No. Pride difference. Pride blinds the eyes. And as we saw in Ezekiel, thy wisdom was corrupted by thine own brightness. Hence, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sakes. For Jesus' sake. Excuse me, beg your pardon. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not of us. Not of us. <laughs> not of us. Because if it's us, who's getting the glory? As, uh, as uh, preacher Aaron Deering Judge says, all glory goes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And amen. All glory goes to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Romans chapter 1 now, verses 18 on to verse 29. Uh, no, verses 18 on to the close of the chapter, excuse me. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, spirit, soul, and body, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Their foolish heart was darkened. What happens when something is very dark? You can't really see, can you? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against 
nature. Uh, the modern term is lesbians. Uh, there you are, you female sodomites. You can't duck these scriptures. The scriptures are silent on nothing. It's whether or not the Lord has given you eyes to see. Verse 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. On a personal note, the Lord spared me in my time when I was a sodomite, when I was a sodomite. The Lord spared me from diseases that I justly earned. He spared me. But you know the one thing that I struggle with? Memories. I, I've shared this with you before. It's the memories. My memories of the past life as a, as a lost man haunt me sometimes. I'm forgiven for them, yes. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. These memories are never going to go away until I'm dead. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Or until we get caught up. Which one comes first? Don't know. God is a God of judgment. And if you are in pride, the Lord ain't going to show you anything except that you are a sinner who cannot save yourself, that you are wicked, and you are going to hell unless you repent of your pride, unless you repent of yourself and turn to the Lord broken and contrite of yourself and believe on him for what he did for you on that cross. And humble yourself. Call on the name of the Lord. And see, here's the thing. When you are truly broken of yourself, you're going to call on the name of the Lord just like that. It just happens, see. But see, when you overstep that, go to belief, and then just forget about that call on the name of the Lord thing. No, that's for the Jews. No, 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 no. No. Easy believism is a doctrine created by the Jesuits to convince the proud that they are righteous. That's all it is. Every single one of you easy believism heretics are of the devil and are feeding doctrines to people that come from the Jesuits. Aren't they? Mark. Let's continue. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, 
implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. <laughs> That's why a certain individual that I've been made aware of is now yoking himself up with these wicked, easy believism heretics. And, and, and that's a shame. That's a shame because this uh, specific individual was very much loved. But see, pride. Pride. Pride blinds. And the Lord can blind your eyes, especially when you're in uh, pride, and will blind your eyes if you are in pride. You see, Jewish people say, we be Abraham's seed. And there were many that believed on Jesus. But when Jesus said, hey, hey, whoa, 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 if you continue in my word, And they reiterated, we be, we are, what did they say? Excuse me, Abraham is our father. But Jesus said unto them, if Abraham were your father, you would do the works of Abraham. Here I am. I, I'm your, I'm your Messiah. I'm God the Father. Here I am. But they didn't. They didn't. And at the end of John chapter 8, those who believed on him, we're about to stone the Lord Jesus Christ. And isn't it interesting that when the, in the scriptures it said, uh, Master, uh, bid your disciples to be quiet, or whatever he says. I'm paraphrasing, beg your pardon. And the Lord said, if these shall hold their peace, the stones shall cry out. The stones. And those stones today are both Jew. And Gentile. But remembering again that stoning was a form of judgment. And we were grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. They are the enemies of the gospel for our sake. There again, you got to remember they have not been cast away, they are not forgotten. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. The church has not replaced Israel. Not at all. Not at all. And because of pride, their eyes are blinded. And all these lost people out here, these Christians in their church buildings, which are soon going to be closed again, you watch, you watch, they're going to be closed again. They're going to be closed again. And these easy believism heretics in their pride who boast themselves of their belief. They're blind. The Lord can open your eyes, but you have to go to the Lord on his terms for him to open up your eyes. Can you see things? Can you see things? Or do you just go side to side? Does the Lord open up things for you in the scriptures? Do you have eyes to see and ears to hear? And an understanding heart? Or are you proud of yourself? And because of what the Church of the Living God preaches onto you through the scriptures, are your eyes closed? Are your ears stopped? Are you have no understanding, huh?
What type of sight do you have? A sight that's in darkness or a sight that is given to you from the Lord? Which one? It's going to be it for this video. These videos, these, the notes for these videos were given on to me, um, primarily given on to me by a beloved brother. And, um, uh, you know, the Lord added on to them. Um, uh, this was a, a combined effort, these two videos, um, which is the way it should be, you know, which is the way it should be. Uh, I just hope and pray that the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. That's all I that's all I care for. That's all I want. It's for our Lord to be glorified, to be magnified. That is going to be it for these uh, videos. And it's now 858 here my time. Going to um, stop this and um, start uploading these. Still don't know what I'm gonna call them. Um, but uh, thank you so much for watching if you do. Thank you. I love you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.